intention of Mrs. Mariam Denton. That is correct. And you had testified that um, she was in detention for over three months. And when the bar met, you were told that uh, she was opposed to use of legal means to secure her release at first instance. Initially, initially that was the case. And subsequently, some female lawyers filed for her release through the court system. And you also told us about the unethical conduct of uh, the state council. After the ruling was read for her release. And, uh, I, I think I called it reprehensible. I think we call it reprehensible, unethical, unprofessional, and reprehensible. Indeed, in your own words, reprehensible, unethical. Yeah, that was on the letter, yes. And you also told us that uh, you had, the bar had written a letter to the Attorney General. Which was after the release of uh, Mrs. Denton. Mrs. Denton. To complain about the conduct of the state council. And you were not sure if uh, the Attorney General did actually respond to your letter. Um, I am not sure. Uh, Was anything done uh, about uh, to address uh, the complaint made by the bar against uh, state council Fagbele as he was then? Nothing was done at all. You also, while explaining about uh, the conduct of uh, Mr. Fagbele, you mentioned that um, his conduct like persisted as a trend at, and a culture at uh, the state law office with respect to prosecutors. I think that was sort of a, the beginning of, of uh, the prosecution's office being used as an in instrument of prosecution and oppression. You use the word um, persecution. I, I mean, yeah, deliberately. I, there's a difference between prosecution and persecution. And this what I mean, this was persecution. It's not a job of prosecution. Can you help with the wall of word? <laughs> because. Uh, about persecution? Yes. Wow. But I use the word notel. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> my Wolof is not that great. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> so, after the incident, um, why, okay, before we move on, uh, why do you think um, the state was um, so. Let's say, why do you think the state was so um, sort of amenable to being influenced? Yes, uh, with respect to uh, the case of Mariam Denton, why do you think the case pursued the matter up to this level? I think it was a manifestation of the intent of the president. To really break to break her. And also send a strong message to the bar. 
ki temen nak don bataxel bo xamne ni danañ ko yubante ci mbotaay loyay but essentially nobody can stand in his way he's like a he's like a bulldozer nobody can stand in his way pour woné rek melni bulldozer rek né dal nagu dan la rek ken man ta taxaw ci kanamam loyay is included what were the activities of uh, mrs dentin at that time that made her a target of the government mrs dentin jamono bobu ci lan la doon yengu be tax be ngour gi tegon ko bot nonu i mean i don't want to delve into the realm of speculation but i i understand that she was perceived as a supporter of the udp buguma wax na lu yaatu ci mbir mom way nak dafa melni dañ ko gisé woné ku bokkon ci parti UDP la ku dan taxawu parti UDP la as i understand that her late father me his soldier please sa ali jack was instrumental uh, was in, in the setting up of UDP ndax papa am yen nako yalla yirem sa ali jack nek nako xamni dal bokk na ci société after uh, UDP after PPP was banned ganna bo xamé ni nguri PPP dal di won nañ ko téré So in your own words um the state wanted to silence her. Mo ngi melni sa kaddu dal uh ngour gi dañ ko bëggon na noppi lo. Yes, and not only her but anybody that had a dissenting or different view or is seen as opposing um Jami. Du mom rek sax waye kep ko xamne ni rek gis nañ ne dal yaangi dox ci saaw so xamne ni da ngay dingat Jami rek. Can you give us all the examples of excesses of the government when it came to lawyers? Dah ding ñu mëna wax ci misal daal mbir yu fal yo xamne ngur gi ñu ko doon jël di ko jëmale ci kaw lawyer um, I think uh okay I mean I mean for example um in in uh in 2005 for example ci misal ci atum 2005 um my senior lawyer usen dabo uh, suma khalifa lawyer usen dabo um, was arrested ñu ko jappon charge uh, tek ko tuma was arrested detained and charged uh, ñu dañ ko jappon tek ko ben place tek ko tuma with murder uh, lu jëm ci wali ray following the death of a um, APR supporter uh, toftal nak uh, fatu uh, kenn ko xamne ni mu ngi do yëngatu ci parti APR ci I mean he he I mean of course he's a was a leader of a, he's a leader of a political party yeah jamono mom nak nek na ku jité nak political party i believe they had a, a rally in basse or somewhere in the in the provinces jamono jo ñu nga am ben rally nak ci basse wala dal ci kaw gi la on the way there was a fracas and then um a supporter of APRC died ya ci bi ñu ñew nak joté amna ci be kenn ci wa APRC bakanam dessi and mr dabo was charged with mother i mean <laughs> mr dabo na ci len ko tek tu mané dafa ray and um uh, the, the initially they refused to grant him bail uh, sanjil ben nak dañ ko bañona jox bail i think it was if i'm correct i was think, i think it was bori touré was the magistrate who granted him bail uh, jamono bo nak bori touré mo nekkon magistrate bi ko mayone bail yeah. and subsequently and and he was actually terminated for doing that uh, mom mu jégi sa ñu dal diko dak ci def gogu mu def lolu and uh, mr dabo was tried and acquitted by a court of law uh, mr dabo nak uh, loi atté ko nak ba dal ko bayyi and i believe the judge who acquitted him was also terminated eh uh, judge bi nga xamné nak moko bayyi né loi topatu ko dara momi dakkon nañ ko this was a case um, involving uh, mr dabo and several of his supporters i believe about 50 or more of them yes, at that time exactly li moy jamono yi nga xamé né mbiri dabo ak lu tollu ci jurom fukk sax ño xamné ñu ngi topon ci gannaawam we have received evidence with respect to this particular case amna sede yo xamné jot nañ ko fi lu aju ci mbir mom and it was indeed mr uh, mr borituri that was the magistrate that handled his bail application waté nak mr borituri mom mo nga wax mom moko joxone bail bi and and another example was um in 2006 benen misal bi moy ci atum 2006 my senior yeah uh, suma khalifa lawyer antuman gay lawyer antuman gay um was unlawfully detained mohammed dal dewal nañ ko teg ben place lo xamne depot ta yon on the orders of 
Justice Paul. Ci ndigal bo xamne mu ngi tukke ci Justice Paul over a civil matter. Ci mbir mo xamne na digante nit ak nit la rek. He was remanded for four days at mile 2. Ñu ngi ko yobu mile 2 be ñenti fan. And bearing in mind uh, this was Justice Paul who came to Gambia as a hustler. Ki nak Justice Paul la mo xamne ba ñoo Gambia pour ur halis. He's a he's from Nigeria. Mu ngi joge ko Nigeria. And um Somehow he lobbied his way into having a job at AMRC. Uh, Subsequently, he was made a judge. And became, I will not say Atekat Bumak, a judge. Atekat. Atekat. Magistrate okay. Atekat Bundau, judge Atekat Bumak as well. we interpret. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be guided. Okay. Yeah, very well. Um, and, um, and he had actually made public statements that he will lock up lawyers. And indeed, he did lock up a lawyer. In the person of lawyer Antuman Gay. Uh, and the bar, we filed, uh, we filed an application for bail. And successfully um, uh, got Mr. Gay but, um, he got his freedom. And this was in January. In, in March 2006, um, Mr. Gay again Mr. Gay was picked up at the High Court by heavily armed guards. Uh, Allegedly, uh, uh, on the instructions of the ex-president. Uh, I was actually present when this happened. Uh, Can you just um, describe to, to us how this incident unfolded that day, the day of the arrest of uh, Antman Gay? at the courthouse. Ni muna wax nak bes biño japp Antuman Gay ci courthouse bi naka la demé. I vividly remember this. Uh ma ngay fatale ko li bu ba. I mean I suddenly saw like a heavy security presence at the court in the at the in the courtyard. Uh ma ngi son nak ño xamné ni ñu yëngu ci wali kaara nga ci courtyard bi. I remember this big um, I think it's F F Ford F-150 vehicle that Jamie had this huge, big one pickup. My father Ford F-150 bu Jamie Amon. Uh, vehicles and a lot of security guys came in with guns armed. Nyom 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 fufu non nyom ame ay fetel. And as if they're going to war. Men nyom hamne de nyom dem kare. I was just standing. I'm like I was like oh. I mean as a lawyer at that time, whenever you see these guys, it could be you. You don't you don't you don't know what is who. who I mean you don't understand. It could be anybody. I'm like what the, what is going on? I understand. And Mr. Gay was actually sitting um, outside court number one on that bench. Mr. Gay, we talk on TBT courthouse door bench number one, court number one. And these people, I don't think they even know who, who Mr. Gay. They, they couldn't identify him. So they rudely bust into a judge's chambers first, looking for Mr. Gay. This was their audacity. They bust, not only did they go, come into a courthouse, they bust into a judge's office. I can't remember which judge it was. But they did. They asked Mr. Gay and the judge. It may have been even Justice, uh, uh, the Ghanaian lady, Justice. It became CGA in the end. In the end. It must have been. Ajimang. Ajimang. I think it was Aj just Ajimang, yes. Justice Ajimang. Who's now the uh, Chief Justice and, um, in, at BVI, by the way. Uh, my Chief Justice, Jamano Bobu. And, no, no, no. I said she's now the Chief Justice at British Virgin Island. Uh, the time she was a High Court judge, Commonwealth High Court judge. Wow. So, anyway, um, they came out and then found Mr. Gay in the chair and just grabbed, grabbed, grabbed Mr. Gay. Then, uh, I remember seeing Mr. Gay's daughter. Ajikombe was there and a few other lawyers. I cannot recall. Domambi, Ajikombe, move on. I get in a lawyer. It was a very sad and helpless moment. Uh,
as I mean, I see Mr. Gay more as a father than as a lawyer. Uh, Mr. Gay, ni moko japi on moi baila ko japi on chani lawyer. They were yanking Ibn Martal away, and, and I'm standing there as a lawyer. Da fa meni sasuma papa chipo hole nti oni man mangito ni lawyer la da mudara luma mana def. I remember when I went to be a lawyer, and one of the people that inspired me and my dad spoke about was Mr. Gay and Usman Silla. Jamano jinga kapi magi buga bo neka lawyer ati sasuma papa don makirtal ni mabole mo Usman Silla ag lawyer gay. This fearless advocate, towering advocate, being grabbed from our courts in broad daylight. The amnak chetu in court iti digi bechek. And we felt we couldn't do anything about it. They nun amu dara lo kamne ni mano na inkoye def. In front of his daughter and her colleagues. Che kanam don budige nam ak ay mnaule. He was even don in his robe, in his robe. I remember this. Bo wasab mugi solo an soli ni loya abi. It just brought me that Idi Amin movie moment. You know, Idi Amin that I was like. This can't be happening in Gambia. Mune mungi me ni mungi don seta ndek fimi idi ami time bo nunu le lo lo mungi am Gambia. It was like a movie, really. I I was like, I could not. It was unbelievable. I don't even. I can't even describe how I felt. In any case, he was taken from the court to to mile two without a court order. Mum nak nyungko jele chi court berak yobu ko mile two chi anam go hamne amuton bendigali or court moi court order. She was, he was detained for seven days. You know, and it was purportedly in connection with the new Ndur Cham coup d'etat at the time, uh, aborted coup d'etat. Uh, the Ndur Cham coup d'etat at the time, being a company named Antu Uton Fitiriomi. At the point of him being arrested in the court premises, was he informed of the reason for his arrest at that point? No, I don't believe he wasn't informed. He was just asked to follow them. And I recall Ajikome was trying to resist. Because she was not a lawyer. She was a daughter. And, you know, and, you know, we had to sort of calm her down because it was, it was a very... It was not a very nice environment. Uh, which security outfit carried out um, this arrest? I think they were, they looked like state guard because they had, I think they were state guard. Yeah, can had a state guard. I can't remember. They were state guard people. Uh, and I think some NIA state guard as well. And this happened in broad daylight right within the court premises. Yeah. Uh, it must have been around noon, -ish, I think. Eleven, yeah. Body eleven, Jim Digibichek. Who was the Chief Justice during this period. Can we own Chief Justice Vijamana Bobo? The Ghanaian, I think Brobby, Brobby Justice. Vijamana Bobo, Ghanaian lad, Brobby. And um, you've told us about how you felt uh, when a senior counsel like Mr. Gay was just grabbed and taken away without due process. Can you tell us the discussions that followed among lawyers on that particular day as to what they just witnessed? I mean, I cannot recall specifically what discussions we had. But I know that subsequently uh, we met as an executive and, and decided that we are going to boycott the courts, I believe. And um, we wrote, we actually wrote a letter asking for the resignation of uh, C.J. Broby. Uh, Chief Justice Bobri, Nedal Nawachi Palasam. 
Why the request for the resignation of Justice Brobery? Because it was under his watch. Uh, um, uh, we have uh, a senior lawyer who um, was jailed um, initially by Justice Paul. And now you have security personnel coming into the court premises. I'm picking up lawyers I'm in broad daylight. Uh, we thought he failed to discharge his duty. Chief Justice. And we were informed that he was allocating the politically sensitive cases to Justice Paul. Knowing very well what would happen in the end. So, I mean, I have a copy of the letter where we requested for his resignation. And I also have a letter from the Attorney General at the time, Edward Gomez, responding to our letter. Can I please have uh, the letter that was written? To the Attorney General. Can you tell us what year this happened, the incident involving uh, Mr. Antuman Gay? Antuman Gay was uh, um, the first one was January 2006. Yeah, uh, January 2006. And the subsequent subsequent one was 2006 March. Uh, March. Six. Two thousand and six. January 2006 and March respectively. Uh, March and you told us that prior to that, Justice Paul was making public statements that he will lock up lawyers. Yes. yes, that is correct. Well, Where no, were I'm these uh, statements made? I mean, it was, I mean, it was widely reported. I don't have the article, but it was widely reported. Uh, I'm, I'm struggling to find the, the letter, but I, I believe I have sent you a, a copy of the letter. Hang on a second. <coughs> when um, Justice Paul started making public statements about uh, locking up lawyers, the Justice Paul come and say, "Nag de wah ne da fai tej ay lawyer." Was the issue addressed immediately by the Gambia Bar Association? Da bam ko wah nag mo ta ay lawyer ne ka fi chibi re we Gambia. Am na dar lo ham ne different ko chi. Well, we boycotted after we decided not to attend his court. I think he had a very lonely court. Yeah, muje gi nak den den talat ni nem nu get the court am muje gi court am idal court yu wit le dan am. Although some of our colleagues sneak in. But the majority of us did not recognize his authority to serve as a judge. Why not? Or his legitimacy, rather. So we, we stopped going to his courts. In fact, um, that precipitated the emission from the International Bar Association. The call for resignation of 
Brobi. Nous d'aller au Ténacour, de Sakou, Guinac, Brobi. And the impasse with just the impasse we had with Justice Paul. Akita menak fevolo binga kamne amne ko ag Justice Paul. Did that precede the arrest of uh, Mr. Antoman Gay? Nalo na mo ji suja kabin Japan Antoman Gay. Came afterwards. The visit came after. Ah, luna mungi after ganau Japan gila. Can you kindly tell us um, whether there were any charges filed against uh, Mr. Gay after his release, after his um, arrest? No. Did it? And um, you just told us about. Um, Mr. Gay's arrest. Yeah. And the public statements that were being made by uh, Justice Paul. Justice Paul, Threatening to lock up lawyers. Yes. How did the bar operate under this tensed atmosphere? Well, I guess we, we, we just manage the situation to the best of our ability at the time or how we saw it. We, yeah. we knew that we were, an, we were, I mean, we were actually a target. We knew that, um, the executive would do everything possible to shut us down. We knew that they wanted to divide us. So, I mean, and we, not all of us were on the same page, by the way. Jamano Bobunak, then John Sohak Jamano Rek, Nah Nun Mujegi, Kamna Nedal Nun Denu Tegon Boot, Taitamanak, then Bugon Rek, Pul Fewel Nununen, Kajalenu. Earlier in your testimony, you mentioned that a united bar. Will hinder the plans of uh, President Jame. And uh, you're just telling us that um, the bar was not united at this point. Did Jame eventually succeed in? Uh, planting the seed of discord among members of the bar. No, I, I didn't say the bar was not united. Uh, I said we were divided. divided. Uh, I know it sounds a bit of, a, of an oxymoron, but I explain myself. Mm. Please help us understand that. Um, Jame did everything possible to divide us. Jame definitely pull him under the pull cage alone. And use different means. He used the anamu uti. So there were a minority of our members. And the new new one is soon beer. Vested interests. You are coming in that gives on any engagement. Economic, political, or what have you. Ludem timbiri copper, wali politic, agwelenen. Who did not. To the bar's line. They were a minority. But the rest were together. For example, if when we uh, our boycott was very successful with Justice Paul. Uh, 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 Justice Paul. Maybe one or two. Maybe one or two. Go to court. But the majority did not go to court. And the difficulty we had was that, I mean, essentially, as a bar, we, we cannot reprimand our members. Our constitution does not have those powers. It's like a, a union. You are a member of a professional body. The most that can happen is you can be expelled.
But we uh, cannot enforce anything against them. We don't have any enforcement powers, even up to date. Jamano Jojo nak amun dole boh kami ni, dari mana force saya sunyi ni, ni jar lain, fini jar. Link mana defrek mui gini lenti, wah nak mui lena force. So members who refuse to comply with the decision of the bar association. Ninga 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 kami ni dah bugo nya anda ak sausi bar association bi. We could not do anything about it. Muni nyo na def darat silulu. Because we didn't have any powers, we just thought that if you sign up to being a member of a professional group. Should accept and uphold the values that underpin the group. Even if it's against your economic interests. Otherwise. Boycotting uh, Justice Paul's court, huh? was it also in uh, protest of uh, the arrest of uh, senior counsel Gay? Yes. yes. Well. And can you tell us how that ended? Well, um, it attracted a lot of attention, both locally and internationally. And um, it prompted uh, the, it led to the resignation of, or well, resignation or termination of C.J. Broby, depending on which version you want to believe. Uh, Chief Justice Broby. And uh, so, the, so the International Bar Association were prompted by the Commonwealth. Failed a, uh, a visit to the Gambia. And um, with a group of eminent jurists from Africa. And the UK. Uh, you had uh, a delegation that was led by Justice Ivan Mukoro. Mukoro of the Constitutional Court of South Africa. Uh, Africa. And Stanford Moyo. Stanford Moyo. He was the deputy president of the Sadak um, Law Society. Uh, and also formerly um, president of Zimbabwe Law Society. And, and um, and a program officer. Um, and also a reporter. It was um, Alex Wilkes. The Alex Wilkes who was part of um, Lord Lester's Herne Hill's um, office. Uh, so um, when this mission contacted us, I remember I got an email. Uh, and um, asked to see us. Uh, and um, Mrs. Ben Sudan and I met the team also met stakeholders. They met the Chief Justice at the time. The Chief Justice Supreme Court judges. High Court judges. Judicial Secretary. No, judicial Secretary is one Judicial person. Secretary. Madam Permanent Secretary, Judicial Secretary. Permanent Secretary, Judicial Magistrates. Magistrates, Atekadi, Speaker, and Deputy Speaker. And the, the development partners. They, Jamie refused to see them. 
jamé nak nangu wuto na gisanté ak ñom the met the vice president waye gisanté nañu ak soxna ci vice president bi ag euh kété men ag bi solicitor general solicitor general and director of public prosecution ki nga xamné ni nak moy director of public prosecution dpp bi i think i've provided the report to you euh yaakar na ma jox le report bi fi you mentioned uh, jamé refusing to see them wax nga fi né jamé dafa bañone pour gissé ak ñom yes wow and um do you know why he refused to see the delegation amon nga li tax mu baña gisse tanef yoy fi ñewu well that is his style i mean he did not want to give them any that's actually a lack of respect lool nak ñak yaar la rek and uh, he, he didn't want to give them any legitimacy uh bu gu leena na jox nak dara lo xamne ni lu wéru la ci wali yoon so he just i mean said oh i mean talk, talk to my vice president and the, and the rest of the team Uh, he, 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 he didn't care about those issues. Uh, and the process culminated in a report. Uh, a very comprehensive report. Uh, I'm titled Under Pressure. yo xamne liñ ci bind moy under pressure the report on, on the rule of law in the gambia lu jëm ci walli top loi fi ci rew yi gambia dated august 2006 ñu bind non ko niki august 2006 and um if you look at my paragraph 10 of my statement so sété nak ci keli xaj ci suma cadeau yi ma bind i think um I mean lawyer of Stanford Moyo deputy president of Sadak uh, lawyer Moyo I mean aptly captured the state of affairs mom nak daldi ona nek I didn't get that one um lawyer Stanford Moyo aptly or properly captured the state of affairs in the Gambia daldi ona lu leer li nga xamne mu ngi jëm ci wali mbiri lawyer fi ci Gambia And I, with your permission I will want to quote this extensively. Kindly do. He said lawyers in the Gambia, mune lawyer yi ci Gambia are currently operating under challenging conditions. E jamono ji nak ñu ngay dox na ci anam go xamne ni guddi nga nu la due to the existence of ongoing incidents of harassment and intimidation. E ci ko dal go xamne ñu ngi leena dal ak itamen di leen xupu which has created a climate of fear. Eh lo xamni nak dal di nañu am nak ak njakaré Gambia and international law recognizes Gambia ak international law di loyé ci biti dal di nañu ragné né fundamental role that lawyers play in ensuring the right to a fair trial eh li nga xamni moy walé fi loyé yi ci até bo xamni ni até bu jublay doon and the good functioning of the administration of justice ak témé nak li nga xamni ni moy liggéey justice The government must respect this. Ngour gi nak fok ci rek ñu cirel li. An independent legal profession free. Ak lool nak ba bok na ci di sago so xamne ni dañ ko dox nak ci wali AT. Free to discharge its functions without fear. Eh té té men nak ñu mëna dal di doxal nak seen liggéey té té men du ci am ben jaxare. Is a prerequisite for an effective administration of justice. Eh ci li nga xamne moy administration of justice and observance of the rule of law ak tamen li nga xamne moy teleli ni loi bi it is one of the primary manifestations eh moy ndjel ben ci li nga xamne ni lolu ay mandaga yu feñ la for society in which human rights eh ci nekkin bo xamne ni ay yelle fi dom adama particularly the right to the protection of the law eh rawati na ci yelle fi bo xamne moy pour ar nak loi bi i enjoyed eh ndal dinañ ci nekk liko banexu end of quote fala nak tink yi nga xamne ni mom la doon feñal jexé this is a page 30 to 31 li nak moy foy fanwer ak ben ci paragraphe 4.38 ñent yi tom mu ñet jox ñet a for said report in essence the delegation um, concluded that there was huge executive interference in the judicial system and the lawyers in the gambia operated under a climate of fear of the executive mo ngi melni dal ñom biñ ñëwé liñ sétlu rek moy né euh ñi nga xamné ño di at dañ duggal seen gëmmeñ ci seen walli doxalini liggéey té taxna sax be loyé yi seen walli liggéey yépp ñu ko andalé ak titangé 
The report also highlighted some instances of interference, Mr. Chairman. Report being been done in a Mr. Chairman, one and a chi and an agdal killify the new Dugas and Loho from the executive. And it also provided instances of judicial excesses in favor of the executive. Our later tendering uh, the report as exhibit. Can you tell us um, if there was any positive outcome uh, from the visit of this esteemed uh, delegation of legal luminaries? I mean, it, it, uh, uh, on a positive note, it really shone a light into what was happening in the Gambia. For the first time, the world started seeing what we are going through. The Gambia being a small country, and perhaps not seen as having well, well, natural resources and having, uh, um, having any um, significant geopolitical value. And in terms of community turn its back, I mean, or they didn't, they sort of like, it was, we were below the radar. Every year you'll have reports from Amnesty, State Department, which is almost like a footnote or paragraphs here and there. This was, this was the first forensic detail report that really brought, brought Gambia the spot, uh, not spotlight for the notoriety. Jammy and people started saying, oh, okay, it's actually happening. In Gambia. Uh, Gambia. That was positive in uh, a sense. On the other hand, uh, it, I mean, it, it hardened Jame. Uh, because he couldn't care less what the UN thought or ECOWAS or anybody for that matter. ECOWAS or anybody for that matter. In fact, he saw us as collaborators with with uh, the imperialists. It was convenient for him to paint the narrative of the imperialist colonizers against us Pan-Africanists. Which was a false narrative. Uh, unfortunately, many bought it. Uh, so he became um, seemingly nationalist in, in his orientation. Uh, and, uh, seemingly, I said. Melni. Melni. And sort of juxtapose us against them, and that these are outsiders trying to impose their standard on us. I didn't get that one. <laughs> <laughs> just go Someone back. Just go help back. Out because my wall of. Of course, of course, the first, the first deal, Melniki, halati kom mid human rights halati tubabla. Uh, you can just go back to the English. Let me. I will take. I will take it back. I even forgot how I said it. <laughs> but anyway, he, he basically just My apologies. Um, this sort of like contestation of um, Western human rights culture and African Gambian uh, right as a sovereign country to do what we like without intervention. Like like he presented the idea of human rights as the, the idea of the white man. 
and he is trying to defend the African ideology. So-called oh, so -called African ideology. Yeah. Basically saying that, I mean, we, we are a sovereign country and we run our country the way we want, but it's actually him, and nobody has a right to interfere in that process, even if he's killing us, arresting us, raping us. Okay, he diverts the attention from the heinous acts that are being committed to this binary of West against us. And then he presented himself as the savior. Yes, as a savior. The, the, the one with the moral authority. He, he the as safeguard as the African way of life. Yes, he presented himself as, as a quintessential an Africanist. Uh, who believe in African values and it's it promoting it to its true culture. And even in the manner he dressed, uh, I, I think he wouldn't wear a suit. Do they sell suit cost me many to up? And he would always, well, I think I've seen him once or twice wear a suit, but he wear his grand boo boo and create this, this aura around, you know, and this mystic, mystic person who's, who embodies Africanness. You see him in the UN and everywhere with his big kaftan and his little stick and the Quran that had nothing in it. Uh, African so he, he used religion and culture. Uh, manipulate the mindset of Gambians. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a sociologist, but I think in Gambia, yeah, now, why Gambia, these are two things that many don't question. Uh, so that's how one of the ways he was able to systematically pitch I mean, us and them. Yeah. And then seemingly has been seemingly seen as the people's president he's close to the people the grassroots and these people out there they don't care about you uh, meanwhile he's attacking us gambians uh, sometimes other other nationals in the gambia and we've seen uh, that uh, when we uh, conducted hearings on the PATP, that is Presidential Alternative Treatment, the witch hunt, as well as um, the attack on religious freedom. We've seen all of these components being shown as to how Jame was able to capture the minds of the people and entrench himself and violate their rights in order for him to fulfill his desire of ruling this country forever, which did not happen. Um, in essence, when you look at even our own African values, these are the basic fundamental human rights. Respecting one another. Respecting the property and life of individuals. Dignity. Integrity. These are the basic African values that, that the human rights stem from. As a, of, 
As a matter of fact, I think the Mandeng Charter is Mali. But it's, it's the foundation of human rights. So human rights is not alien to us. It's very much in our culture, in our religion. Even in our traditional religions. Thank you very much for that. Uh, going back to the harassment of lawyers, can you please give us uh, more examples? Um, I'll take you back 2005. Mrs. Mary Samba Christensen. Uh, Mrs. Mary Samba Christensen <coughs> was also invited for questioning to the NIA. Uh, uh, and arbitrarily detained for three years. Uh, uh, three days, sorry. And by the way, she was an expectant mother. Uh, what did she do? She simply represented Harris Supermarket. Uh, Harris Supermarket. Um, what happened is uh, uh, there was an executive order. Later on, more Nekone, the Pamon Digal Bujiko Chako. Harris Supermarket should be closed. Harris Supermarket, then cover it. Like, you know, you know, they call them directives. It was a directive. Uh, no legal basis. I was just about to say that you said executive order, not court order. I mean, it was an executive order. It was an executive order which I call bracket directives, they used to call them. It's a directive. Why not? The, the, the authorities, whether it's the police or the NIA, would carry out these orders and close. The supermarket. Uh, NIA, so, uh, uh, Mrs. Mary Samba and Omar Njai were engaged. Omar mm. Njai now present court of appeal. Uh, Mrs. Mary Samba and Omar Njai, nga hamne moye presenti court bi dapel jamano bo dugal And they filed action in court. Uh, in in high court. Nak, uh, lolu chi high court bi udingat ko. And the court ruled that um, the supermarket was unlawfully closed. Uh, and then uh, the supermarket was asked that the uh, NIA would close the supermarket. Uh, I have a copy of the order. 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 And then after the order was closed, uh, or, or was made actually. Sorry, it's 2003, not 2005. Uh, at 2003 and do 2005. So, um, there was a headline. Uh, in the point newspaper. The point newspaper, KT newspaper, Bobo. That said, the State House. State House. Closes supermarkets. And then take back the supermarket. And then it says High Court reopens them. Uh, uh, high Court with the State House versus High, high court. court. And then, because of that, the Glulu, Council Mary Samba, Mary Samba, was arrested. New yeah. Japako. And kept for three days. And she informed me that. Uh, that the that of NIA at the time okay. simply told her that she hasn't done anything, but this is coming from the president. Because he was apologizing to her, but, saying, but said there's nothing I could do about this. And that was the late Daba Marena. Who, as you know, became a victim of the same system. Mom Sam Mujegi Nekana for Hamne Nikoloro Lanaka Echi Ngurg Yanangurg. May his soul rest in peace. Yanakoya Lirim.
So the directives from the office of the president were essentially considered law. Jame was the law. Jame modon luabi. I recall, I think someone said, um, letter is a moi. It'll be 14. I think um, one of the, I had a testimony, I think I heard the chairman repeating it. Letter is a moi. Jame was the state. What he wanted happened, and it's law. Not yeah. constitutionally, but de facto it happened. And there was nothing anybody could or did about it. In fact, uh, there was a time he said, I think even Killer Ace made a song and quoted it. The song by Killer Ace. Yeah. How he felt, that's how he acted, that's how he behaved. We allow him to own the country, to own us, to own our dignity. All of us to a large extent. Wittingly or unwittingly. And the directives of the presidents were above court orders and the law itself. I mean, legally they were not above. I mean, a directive cannot be above the law. I mean, constitution states what is law in the Gambia. Constitution, we didn't even get to that. We didn't even challenge those directives. Uh, or we didn't do it effectively. For example, when Council Samba sought to act against the directive uh, by going to court, my council Samba, Jamal Binga Hameni, we didn't do it on the instructions of her clients. And that has been the trend. When you say executive directive, Bonne executive directive didn't take a look at the court. Just to see it. No, Jamis law. It's a law in Jamis. It's different from the Constitution. There's the Constitution and there's Jamis law. Law law out in our Constitution, but the book is a law. And during Jamis era, the Constitution was changed. And during Jamis era, the Constitution was most of the time disregarded. And his words became more powerful than the constitution itself. He made it more powerful than the constitution. I mean, the constitution was just a book. The constitution was a book. First of all, he butchered it over 52 times to suit to build, in, to entrench himself. Uh, to use, he used, um, he used the constitution. When it suited him. As an instrument to consolidate and perpetuate his power. And when it didn't suit him, he would walk outside, he would walk around it. Sometimes he will use his persecutors. Use the laws that were some of the laws that were made. For his benefit. Sometimes laws are abused for his benefit. To take people to court. You get to the court. You have these judges. Will act in a way to make sure his wishes came to fruition. So you cannot escape. You have the security people will arrest you. Uh, his, his will lost to make sure that it's so hard to escape. Uh, 
his prosecutor, I mean, his prosecutors will craft charges, frivolous charges. Yeah, <laughs> will prosecute you. Judges will prosecute you. Jail, I take two more years. Lock you in the jail too. You will take two more years. Once you're there, they'll come and abuse you. Yeah, for time. Bring an extra mile to the new hotel. That was in some the system. Don't want to continue in Burma. Was anything done to address the issue of uh, Mrs. Uh, Mary Samba Christensen? Mary, Mary, yes, Mary, Mary Samba Christensen, mom. Yeah, when, when, we, when we learned of the balance of the, his, um, I was not, I mean, I was just new actually at the time. Maybe, I think Mrs. Mrs. Jahate might know a bit about this. But the bar actually went in front of the NIA at the time. Uh, we, we boycotted the court that day and went in front of the NIA. Uh, but, but, from the NIA. Then get in a court with them to kind of NIA. And, um, but I have not seen any official correspondence. Uh, why not? It's my daughter law, how many money by a coach obviously. But it was not during my time. Why not? Could you sum up In fact, around that time, the bar was not very active. Uh, Jamano Bonak, Babi Degeruto Nunu. The bar was revived by Mrs. Bensura. It's uh, the time, if I could say, any vibrancy that we may have had, it was during the tenure, it started with the tenure of Mrs. Bensuda. Uh, Mrs. Bensuda. 2006. Uh, so that was a rare show of defiance by the bar at that time. You can call it that. Let's move on to more examples, if you may. Well, um, of, uh, another one, uh, case uh, was um, uh, uh, Lamin Sise, uh, Council Lamin Sise and Badu Conte. Yen and Miss Ali Mafia Amway Council Lamin Sise and Badu Conte. I can't remember dates exactly, but I'll give, the, I'll give it to you later on. I mean, they, they were involved as solicitors in a land transaction in, I think it was a Gunyun Motel. I think they were acting for the, the, the vendor and the purchaser, respectively. Uh, so the transaction was done and dusted. Uh, but little did they know that um, His Majesty had, uh, had an interest in uh, the property. Uh, no, point, no, no point intended here. And um, long and short of it, he instructed Holgam, the Holgam, dog squad, to arrest um, uh, Badu Conte, lawyer mm -hmm. Badu Conte, and they were detained at Holgam. By the drug, not at the end of the day. And you don't jump for over not taking for Ben Plus, the Buntulige Kai police be say to all the Kaham Cineba. Ludemsi Nare Fan. Merely representing their clients in a land transaction. The Greg Nenom Dente Walon Seni Kilianti Atebo. Another example I can give you is Benen Missal Bimalamuna Jokmoy. The Moses Richards. Situation. Uh, yes. Richard. Hello? Do you tell us about that? Yeah. What? Uh, yeah. Um, basically, um, Moses Richards, um, it's around, I think it's around 2011. Uh, Moses Richards, Lulu, at 2011. Yeah, Moses Richard, Richards was detained. Moses Richards, then called Japan. Merely acting on the instructions of his client. I think my colleague Shiv Tambe touched on it. Uh, yes, indeed. Yeah. Anyway, he, he, I mean, he wrote a letter um, to the sheriff's department. And over an enforcement issue, I believe. And he that letter was forwarded to the uh, to the NIA and security people. Letter bo na nyudal di ko agalis NIA bi ak security ni ni nek ti wali karang bi. And then, in fact, what happened was the sheriff. Dekhe wanta mo sheriff bi. 
um, when he was applying to Moses Richard, copied the executive. So yeah. this is like a lawyer writing to the judiciary. Uh, the, and, and in response, this, this executive was copied. Uh. And uh, that was it like a normal procedure for the sheriff to copy the executive in its letters? When we talk about a separation of powers, the judiciary is not under the executive. It's a separate uh, of government. And the independence of the judiciary is sacrosanct in any democratic system. Fundamental. So here you have an executive basically I mean, a, a judiciary now being micromanaged by the executive and to the extent of, um, I mean, the ex executive were not privy, we're not, they were not part to this, to this issue. No, they were copied. But then been done right? and in the end, um, Moses Richard was charged. I can't remember exactly what he was charged with. We have been giving false information, if I'm correct. Jacodal, take two or two, and have done your hair. I can't do your hair, and you in this case, um, the judiciary invited yes, the they, executive to deal with yes. its issues. In a way, it sort of like handed over its independence uh, to the executive to yeah. act on its behalf. Yeah, essentially, they, I mean, I mean, I recall I visited my learned friend in my school. And um, I mean, we had a discussion about what transpired. And also what the bar could do for him. Council, uh, Mr. Gay was his counsel, I remember. Mr. Gay, And uh, I mean, if you know Mr. Richards, he's a very... He's a very vibrant, you know, upbeat. Uh, so I mean, I sat next to him and I saw someone beating down, and um, and we're trying to get him to allow us to take action on his behalf. Uh, just like Mrs. Denton, he's like, let's just hold on for a moment. And uh, see uh, what will come out of it. Same argument. Same. I mean, he didn't have any faith in the system. He was wrong. He was taking advantage of. Uh, the time he was not willing to allow us because, like, we were in Gambia in those days, lawyers were negotiators. You were negotiating your freedom, freedom behind closed doors. Uh, you mentioned something. You said um, in the Gambia, lawyers were negotiators at that time. Yes. Instead of fighting for one's freedom, they negotiate a person's uh, freedom. Can you please address uh, on that issue? Yeah, because I don't. I wouldn't profess to be a. I'm a transaction lawyer, I'm not an expert criminal lawyer, but I believe that if somebody is unlawfully detained, I mean, the, you seek redress from the courts. It looks like, my event from where I saw it, I mean, as somebody who's relatively young and new in the bar, I saw it was more like, let's go and negotiate with the executive so that they will not charge or they will drop charges. I mean, we're effectively at the mercy of the executive to decide your fate, even though they are breaking the law. I mean, and it's, and it's and it's very, and and at the end of the day, you cannot file an action if you don't have instructions. You cannot, um, you cannot be a busy, busy body and file a case. <coughs> and that, that kind of tied the bar's hand. 
Also, you cannot blame, unless if you go to mile two and see the state of mile two and you are on the other side, you can understand why somebody um, so bold and brave can take that decision. It's easy to judge when you're on the other side. But if you're in that seat, you want to go to your family, you'll do everything possible. Uh -huh. that seat. Not, so many, not, not many would stick to principle and say no, we'll go to court. Uh, because of uh, Richard's case, we, we, we had a meeting as a bar. We planned a protest. First of all, we issued a statement condemning um, his unlawful detention. And because it was an attack to the independence of the bar. Because as lawyers, we are acting on behalf of our clients. Now, to be detained and locked up for merely carrying out instructions of your client. That was a new law I mean, in Gambia. It threatened our way of working. And that was the same for Mrs. Mary Samba yes. Christensen, yeah. uh, Laman Sisi, and exactly. Conte, yes. and now Moses Richards. Yeah. So it's becoming a trend. So basically, and unfortunately, that also determined how lawyers work. So lawyers have started being extraordinarily cautious rightly or wrongly, and deciding what case to take, what case not, what not to take. Uh, I remember, I remember one of uh, my um, sort of mentors, um, um, very um, 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 uh, an entrepreneur guy, actually Mustafa Njai, I'll just say it. Uh, Mustafa, and he called me and it was like, Sal, you know, as a lawyer, you should be very careful in this country. He, he told me something I'll never forget. He said, every day you wake up as a lawyer, or even as a citizen at the time in Jamis days, imagine that there are booby traps everywhere. So when you're taking a step, any step you take, you're about to take. Think well, of where you're going to put that step. Because yeah. there's so many possibilities you cannot imagine. For how many you need to understand this? Any mobile phone? A boy, a girl, a boy, a girl. You're going to get a lot of things going to take. And I used to. I mean, sometimes you know, it's, it was a, it's like a tragic comedy. <coughs> sometimes it's like when you're writing letters to the state. Sometimes it looks like looks like you're writing a love letter. You're trying to seduce and caress exactly. the state into. You would, you would, I mean, and it's not, it's not, it's now we can say, we can laugh about it, but imagine the indignity of getting to this, to this, um, to the, to the state and couching your words in a way, sometimes even embellishing. Uh, just to, just to have, I mean, just, for, so first of all, just even trying to. Capture the name is a problem. Uh, not want to get it wrong. And uh, then also watching your words, you have to be a wordsmith. You have to watch every word has an import that can land you in jail or get you detained and arrested. Our independence as 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 lawyers was severely impaired. Uh, it, it didn't matter what area it is. I mean, it's not about whether you are doing your criminal, you're doing criminal law. I mean, like Lamin Sise and um, I mean the other Lamin Sise, of course. Lamin Sise and Badu Conte were doing a land transaction. Yeah, Lamin Sise and Badu Conte. I mean, uh, you just have to be unlucky that somebody's interested in that transaction, and you're in trouble. 
gis rek ne nga ñak sa am rol ne amna ko xamne ni amna haajo ci mbir mom bu ko defé nga am ay jafé jafé so i mean this was the all of the day and then in the end we we are we 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 met we had a meeting we said we're going to have a a strike ci lañ oté nak né dañ am meeting ñu né dal dañ wara def ben greffe i remember the the young youngish lawyers like sagar and others we all like you know Let's go have a strike and ouais I remember this particular day we were supposed to have the strike and uh, I proposed that how about we rent a coaster uh, ma xelat ne ndax duñ luyas ben coaster we all you respect like she did explain when we organize a strike when we have this meetings people disappear they don't come so I said you know the only way we, we can make sure that we all rise or sing together is I said uh, my my um, father in law at the time on Gamtos I said I can arrange a bus to Uncle Bajfay euh Yeah. How did you know that um, everything you discussed uh, was transmitted to the AG by someone that attended the meeting? I will get to that. But I was told by an NIA operative because at the time, one of my, my dad's brother, Dr. Sajatal, uh, was a lecturer at the University of Gambia. So a lot of these NIA operatives were his students and they liked him. Uh, so through that i was called and told you know if we like your uncle and everything else so be careful they even told me what i said in the meeting uh, <laughs> they said you're just starting you're a young man don't follow these old men they're all politicians uh, they quoted me verbatim <laughs> And subsequently, when, when we also went to the Attorney General, yeah, Attorney General I recall she passed a comment that suggested that she knew what we said. Uh, what, we, what we planned. I think there was a, yeah. So, um, who was the Attorney General at that, at that time? Can we want Attorney General be German Bob? I think it was Edu. Sorry, um, I, I let me let me rectify this. In this case, the Attorney General was not. I, was, I, was, I wasn't sure whether he was aware of what we discussed. That's another story. I'll tell later on. So the NIA for sure. I put NIA in the name of The Attorney General was um, Edward um, Gomez. Uh, Attorney General Benjamin Obu, Edward Gomez, la. So in this case, the Attorney General was not aware of what was discussed at the, best the band. Of my knowledge he well he, he didn't i mean there was another instance where it happened which i'll talk about later but in this case it was the nia um, that was surely was aware of what was what, uh, what we uh, like like sheriff tabid explained mm -hmm. i think i mean when we i mean few of us were well, well, I, I, i came to the court early a bit early Uh, I vividly recall, and I just, I, I was, as I was walking in, Chef Tamil was walking towards me like, Sumaraka, nyibil, nyibil, nyibil. I'm like, what is going on? He said, no, 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 go, 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 go. And then I could saw all these guys with their suits. I mean, they can't even hide. They're wearing their suits and their dark glasses all over the place. And I remember Oman Jai was there. Just, just, Oman Jai. And I remember Ibu Ranke Jane. And they were only a few of us early. And Sheriff told me, like, uh, as, a, as an older person, he could not allow us to get arrested because we didn't have the numbers. So I was like, well, let's, let's stay. If we stay and all of us get arrested, then it'll be different. 
He said, no, 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 you all, I mean, you are young lawyers and I cannot take the responsibility of staying here with you and they will just arrest a few of us. Uh, you mm, will come out of it. So, basically, <coughs> we were supposed to have the meeting at court number one. So we were, we were dis dispersed by the NIA and we could have a meeting in the court. And there's nothing we could do about it. And this was a meeting set up to discuss the issue uh, of uh, Moses Richards. Yes. I mean, afterwards, just to go back, we did have a meeting in our office, which is a smaller space, and that is, I mean, then that's why we pass a few resolutions as to what course of action we need to take, which I will share with you later on. I think I have given you the letter we wrote to to the to um, the Chief Justice. You gave me the letter dated 1st August 2006 and this is with respect to guidelines on the rules of uh, the prosecutors. Okay, uh, okay I'll come to that. But before that, um, I, would, I would like, I have a few documents that perhaps... Uh, perhaps we're, we'll try to reshuffle we're, we're the documents uh, during the break so that we yeah, yeah, can I mean, tender it properly. So uh, maybe I can just quickly take you through them. Then after we can, on the Mr. Chairman, um, with permission of with your permission, because it's already uh, time for the second break. We'll just want to finish up with this point, then go on a break. Fine, fine. You may proceed then. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, we, there, there is a, a letter dated 7th January, 2011. Uh, I'm not January 2011, and uh, which uh, which uh, which um, I will uh, which um, basically is titled urgent general absence of counsel. Uh, and the because we we had decided that no lawyer will attend the court, so we had to inform the master of the high court that no no no, no lawyer will attend um, the court. Which I will share with you later on. And a letter dated 10th of January. Titled um, Prosecution of Moses Protest Action, Prosecution of Moses Richards. And then um, where, that is where we communicated to the judiciary that by resolution of the bar, we will not be in court for three days. And then the letter dated. The, then, then there's a let, Then we have a letter. Dated um, 10th of January. January. From the Attorney General at the time. Attorney General Basically, um, questioning the right of the bar. To ask for the for um, basically for the resignation of the Chief Justice. Reminding us that we are not the appointing authority of Chief Justice, therefore we can't demand for his resignation. Uh, and we have a letter of the uh, 13th of January, where we reiterated our call for the resignation of the Chief Justice and the reason why we um, said so. So, all, so I guess later on you can... Um, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. That will be all for now. Um, we can easily go into our second break and be back to continue with the witness. Fine, thank you, Emma Council. Uh, we will take a one hour lunch break and come back at um, half past two. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.
money touch down, get a rock down Gangtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. your pastry, bakery, and quality food, CK Restaurant is the only place to be. We do catering for birthdays, weddings, and all related services. We have all kinds of local foods, American, European, and even beyond. Come and have a taste of our local juice, Ebe and other services. At CK Restaurant, customer satisfaction is our priority. Pour vous exactement ce que vous avez fait, vous avez fait un 
amning perfumes, you know, fragrances, men's shirts, um, accessories. We do do dresses as well. We do blouses. I mean, we do shoes. Name it, we do them. Skincare Plus 2020 is our year of perfection. Zero tasks. Who make any real me fake? Can what are perfect tasks? Can what are fake? I'm problem with canam. Can what are fake? I'm problem with picture. Book a man who fake and erect new law. Keep a last with fee. Touchdown, but I broke down.